Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A wrong-way driver on I-94 loses his life, as does an innocent victim, and... Session 3449, I just observed a small child in the backseat of one of the vehicles. The child has a pulse. We'll update you on that child and take you inside the emergency response. Coming up on the night cam. All right, Tim, but we begin with a downriver mother claiming she and her five year old son were kicked out of a local salon. That mother says she was denied service after her son with autism had an outburst inside the business. Victor Williams is live in Brownstown Township. Victor, that mother was not happy about how she was then treated. Not happy at all, Kimberly and Jason. At the end of the day, all she wanted was a back to school haircut for her son, one that he did not end up receiving. And she has a feeling that she knows exactly why. He should have been able to get a haircut or at least given the opportunity to try. Gloria Gonzalez believes her five year old son, Gabriel, was denied a haircut <laughs> partially because of an outburst due to his autism. He has a very high pitched cry. And when he doesn't want to do something, I do have to take him from a level 10 to a level five. And then from a five to maybe a three. The mother of three <laughs> says instead of being allowed to calm her son down, she was disrespectfully told to leave. She didn't let him sit down. She didn't give him a chance to calm down. She just blatantly told me that she was not cutting his hair. We tried talking to the franchise manager about the situation. She did not want to go on camera at all, but she denies it had anything to do with the child's autism, but his erratic behavior. My name is Gloria, however, says that's nothing new for a barber shop. And a lot of times in the past with my other kids, because I do have three boys, I've sat in the chair and they've sat on my lap even, but this was a blatant, I will not cut his hair. There was no ifs, ands, buts, or any reading between the lines. This was blatant, no. Now she wants sensitivity training for all Great Clips locations nationwide. My son is autistic, but he's human, and people need to realize that he's human. And there's autistic people everywhere, and we have to have that patience and that grace and that training. I don't want anything from Great Clips, but training. And believe it or not, Gloria says that Gabriel was actually able to receive two haircuts at this very same location before, and the hairstylist just decided to work with him. Obviously, that was not the case in this situation. But after we took a corporate call to the headquarters of Great Clips, they did end up sending us this statement from the franchise owner, which does partly read, quote, I'm proud to welcome all customers into my salons. The event that recently took place in my Brownstown salon was an unfortunate instance of miscommunication. We've reached out to the family and would welcome the opportunity to have them in our salon again in the future. In Brownstown Charter Township, Victor Williams, Local 4. Good the owner stepped up and made that statement and that offer. Victor, we appreciate it. All right, turning now to the forecast. Temperatures dropping into the teens overnight. Yeah, Andrew, uh, what are we looking like tomorrow morning when we get out there? Well, at least it will be dry, but Kimberly and Jason, you're absolutely right. It does get colder. We have temperatures in the 20s right now. Now, it will be very cold by morning, but not as frigid as earlier this morning where many temperatures were below zero. Right now, we have temperatures mostly in the 20s, ranging from 21 in Pontiac to 25 degrees over in Mount Clemens. Tonight, we will see temperatures in the teens, but we'll see clear skies just like we have right now with 20 degrees currently over at Metro Airport. Notice wind chills in the single digits. That will become more common as the hours go by into the overnight hours. Right now, a few other wind chills are in the single digits, including Ann Arbor, where it feels like nine if your skin is not protected. So make sure you bundle up for tomorrow morning because we'll have clear skies overnight. We'll have colder conditions with temps in the teens and wind chills in the single digits at the bus stop and elsewhere within Southeast Michigan. And over our heads, we'll see clear skies overnight and lots of sunshine starting tomorrow morning. But what about tomorrow afternoon? Where do temperatures go from here? And is there any more snow later this week? I've got the answers in your seven day forecast in minutes. All right, Andrew, new information tonight in that violent head on crash on I-94. Investigators now blaming a wrong way driver. Tim Pamplin is in St. Clair County with the night cam. Tim. Interstate 94 up near Casco Township, Port Huron Way recently opened back up after an awful collision along this stretch of freeway. The eastbound lanes shut down for many hours as police investigate this fatal collision. 
Attention all units, copy VOL for a vehicle going the wrong way on the eastbound side and it's headed westbound. And then a few seconds later. All units, in regards to that VOL, he just hit somebody head on, head on collision. We're getting the exact location, stand by. Michigan State Police tell us a 25 year old man from St. Clair behind the wheel of a small Chevy Cruze going the wrong way when he plowed head on into a GMC Yukon. Other drivers tried to help, but there was nothing they could do. The passerby stopped. She can't feel a pulse at this time. Can't get him out either. And then a few minutes after the initial run came out, an officer gets on the radio. Dispatch 3449, I just observed a small child in the backseat of one of the vehicles. The child has a pulse. Happy, the child has a pulse. Thank you. That young child taken to an area hospital and then transferred down to Detroit's Children's Hospital, where they're currently listed in critical condition. So back right here, there's that Chevy Cruze. The man from St. Clair was driving on the wrong side of the road. And the GMC Yukon, the 33-year-old, and the young child in the back clinging to life. That is the scene in St. Clair County tonight with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. Now to the COVID surge in Michigan as the daily average is once again close to a record. The state reporting 61,235 cases over the past five days. That average is out to about 12,000 cases per day. We've lost another 298 lives to the virus. Tonight, Caesars Windsor announced a temporary close on restaurants and casinos from January 5th to January 26th due to a rise in COVID cases. The FDA has also authorized Pfizer's booster shot for children 12 to 15 years of age. They can receive it five months after they receive their last dose. Meanwhile, experts are trying to balance the benefits of in-person learning with the surge of COVID cases in children. There is absolutely no way to keep Omicron out of the schools. No way. It's more transmissible. It passes through and looks just like a cold. And what we're going to be relying on is testing in addition to the standard practices of masking, social distancing, and hand hygiene. But the testing that we're using, these antigen tests at home, simply are not sensitive enough to keep Omicron out of our schools. Well, today we saw extremely long lines at COVID testing sites at Lakeside Mall and the Millennium Center at Northwestern Highway and 14 Mile. Detroit firefighters rescued a mother and her three children after their west side home went up in flames. All four had to be rushed to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Our Mara McDonald is live at Children's Hospital tonight where the children are being treated. And first, first of all, Mara, how are the kids and is there any idea what caused this fire? Well, Jace, first off, the entire family is expected to survive. Now, that said, they're in bad shape. You've got three children under the age of five here at Children's Hospital. Two of them are intubated and in critical condition. The third is in serious condition. Their mother, she's at a hospital across town, intubated and critical as well. When Detroit firefighters got on scene, there was a huge amount of black smoke billowing from the rear of the home. You can see how hot it was burning. The siding is peeling right off, and the back of the home is nothing but soot. Our companies responded to a house fire at uh, O'Hare on Kentucky, and there were uh, people trapped. Firefighters tell us the 30-year-old mom had gotten her children into a room the furthest away from the flames she could. She had her five-year-old son, two-year-old daughter, and four-month-old baby girl with her. Neighbors told me watching firefighters scale the roof to make the rescue was something they never expected to see. All four had to be taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. But now the investigation into what happened is on. Arson was called to the scene because while they know the fire started in the rear of the home, they're still working on an exact cause. However, candles and space heaters were being used. DFD is not sure if those items are responsible yet. The mom did a very good job getting the kids out, helping them get the kids out. But the firefighters uh, assisted her and they, they took over and got all the kids out of the house. Back here live, the fire department may not have a cause yet, but they will say tonight that they think it's accidental. We're live at Children's Hospital. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, I'm certainly hoping for some good, uh, good outcomes there. All right, Mara. Tonight, a Shelby Township man is facing child abuse charges. 28-year-old Mitchell Leach is accused of abusing his infant child who remains hospitalized. 
Today, Leach was charged with first degree child abuse with bond set at $200,000. He remains in custody at the Macomb County Jail. Several Democratic lawmakers in Detroit are filing a lawsuit over the new voting maps approved by Michigan's redistricting commission. The suit is being filed with the Michigan Supreme Court. It claims the new districts violate the Voting Rights Act and will silence black voters because the maps do away with most of the minority districts at the state and federal levels and combine communities with different interests like Birmingham, Detroit and Taylor. The suit involves current and former lawmakers. There are people that can draw maps today, today, that includes the partisan right fairness. partisan fairness uh, and, and demographic for African Americans to not be uh, the, 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 their vote to be diluted. Members of the redistricting commission say they believe the maps comply with the Voting Rights Act. All right, time now to get those Powerball tickets out. Tonight's jackpot worth $540 million. <laughs> the cash option, if you'd like to take it, Kim, is $384 million. Not too bad. Here you go, kids. Here are the winning numbers. 2, 13, 32, 33, 48, and the Powerball is 22. Power play number is two. Good luck to whoever has a ticket in your hot little hand out there. Yeah, I don't hear anybody screaming from the newsroom or <laughs> upstairs, so it's not anybody here. I heard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, still to come, it uh, has turned into one of the most popular New Year's resolutions. What you need to know if you're taking part in dry January. A serial burglar caught on camera. What happened when a homeowner confronted him with a gun? But first, a woman inside a local Coney Island is speaking out about the moments an out-of-control SUV slammed into that building. It's next.